Okay. Mary Mank. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mary Mank McCarthy, and I'm the executive director of the National Immigrant Justice Center. And it's so exciting to be with you today. It's been a long road with many people involved to get to where we are. And we are very excited to celebrate the expansion and protection for immigrant children in Illinois. It is my privilege to share this platform today with Representative Gong Gershowitz and Illinois Senator Castro. An NIJC client and SIJS recipient, Dariana, and two of my colleagues who have worked so hard to make today possible. These people with many colleagues across the state have advocated for years for increased protection for the future of Illinois immigrant children and youth. NIJC combines, combines our advocacy, education, and direct services. So after celebrating today, we will shift our focus to hear from attorneys who are actively ensuring the fair application of this law in the courts across the state. We are grateful for these lawyers and their clients as they push our state forward to respect human rights for all individuals. In 2019, with representative and senator's leadership and support from our law firm partner, DLA Piper, we were able to celebrate a new SIJS law in Illinois. This law brought important elements of Illinois law up to date with federal immigration laws regarding special immigrant juvenile status. While this was a great success, we realized that there was more to be done and the, the law, Illinois law fell short. With continued advocacy, just two years later, we are here once again. Illinois is one of the very few states in the country that has implemented this level of protection for immigrant children. Illinois continues to lead the charge, push the law and protect this resilient population. Many of these children have suffered unimaginable events in their short lives but support from the community with legal protection and stability, we have great faith that they are our future leaders. Thank you for all that you do to support this work. Now, it is my privilege to turn it over to Representative Gong Gershwitz and Senator Castro to share their efforts for this law. Again, many thanks to all of you. Representative, if you'd like to share a couple words. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Well, yes, first we of do. all, uh, thank you all so much for inviting me here um, to say a few words. You know, none of us pass a bill in the General Assembly alone. Uh, it takes an incredible team. And I want to thank uh, Hillary Richardson and Julian Lazalde at uh, the National Immigrant Justice Center, and of course, Mary Meg, for all of your leadership in making sure that we did everything that we can um, on our end uh, to have the support that we need to get a bill like this done. Um, you know, this is an issue that is near and dear to my heart, as many of you know. Um, it was 20 years ago that I was exactly where uh, all of the people attending this training are. I was a lawyer at Winston & Strawn. Uh, sifting through the materials provided to me by the National Immigrant Justice Center as I learned the ropes and I uh, navigated for the very first time the process of uh, representing unaccompanied immigrant children um, and being an advocate for those who are most vulnerable in our communities. The National Immigrant Justice Center is an organization that I know well um, and one I, that is a uh, very close to uh, the work that I have done for the last two decades. And so um, it's truly an honor to be here with you today to talk about um, this bill, why it's important, um, and, and how it came to be a little bit. Um, you know, it was in uh, 2018, I think, that I reached out to NIJC and I said, are you all having the same problems that I'm hearing from practitioners around the state that it is almost impossible to predict with any kind of certainty whether or not it will be achievable to get a predicate order for a special immigrant juvenile visa. 
in our courts throughout the state. And of course, I, Hillary reached out and, and responded and said, yes, this is a big problem. And so one of the first things that we did was we you know, put a group together to try and figure out how we could adjust the statutes in Illinois to ensure that our courts know what to do. So that when our pro bono lawyers walk into those courtrooms, they don't have to explain the law, that it's very clear what our courts are supposed to provide in terms of protection for abused, abandoned, and neglected youth. We discussed at that time uh, trying to extend that protection to the full extent of federal law for uh, youth up to the age of 21, but felt for a variety of reasons uh, that we needed to educate the General Assembly about the need uh, to fill this gap, to get across that first hurdle of ensuring that the statutes um, met the needs of uh, those who were applying for those predicate orders, and figured we'd go back with a trailer bill to make sure that we could protect kids to the full extent of federal law. That's what we did this year with Senator Castro's leadership in the Senate um, and these amazing attorneys at NIJC. We have now made Illinois uh, fully compliant with federal law, providing protection to special immigrant juvenile minors uh, to the full extent of federal law, which is which is a big deal. So I want to thank all of you uh, for giving me the opportunity to do this work. Um, you all are incredible. And I, you know, I don't have too much else to say except thank you to the pro bono lawyers out there for taking on these cases. Um, you know, this is how we get it done and make sure that all these kids have access to the legal representation that they need and deserve. And uh, you know, I thank you for your time and uh, your willingness to take on these cases. So uh, with that, I'm going to kick it back to all of you. Well, I guess I will go next. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm State Senator Christina Castro. And first off, I want to thank uh, my colleague in the House, Rep. Don Gershwitz. I mean, uh, we have one immigration attorney who has an expertise, and that's Rep. Don Gershwitz. I have had to uh, speak to Rep about various things in regards to immigration. And I said, hey, can I pick your brain uh, from a law perspective uh, on certain issues? And she gives a very heartfelt, honest, from a practitioner's point of view, whether what we're trying to do in the law is gonna work or not, or the challenges we may face. Um, I also wanna thank Hillary, Julian, and Danielle for their advocacy, their testimony during committee hearing I know it kind of got a little, we had, I think in both chambers, 4,000 bills um, get filed, uh, but we were able to shepherd this one in when it seemed like it got just in a bottleneck because of all the bills, we were able to move it to the exec committee, which I am the chair, and we got it through uh, relatively easily um, with support from Republic, some Republicans. Um, the other thing too is, you know, one of the things that I think Rep. Don Gershwitz and I always appreciate is you guys are all at the front line. So as we hear challenges, I mean, we have taken some bold steps here to close some loopholes, put us in line with federal law. Uh, we will continue to work on these issues as you as practitioners realize them in the courtroom, things we may not be aware of that need to, that are still fuzzy and need to be addressed. Uh, we are here to do so. I know Rep. Don Gershwitz also worked uh, with Senator Aquino, uh, is going to be recognized for her work on that at noon today with Tony Preckwinkle. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do in partnership in addressing these to make, not only for immigrant children, but to, to give everyone a voice, um, to have them have all the opportunities, especially in a courtroom, um, to realize what they need to do to stay here in most cases or apply for visas or whatnot. So I appreciate all the work all of you have done. It is an honor to be here. And uh, I, you know, I can't thank enough everybody who has been a part of it and IJC, you know, pub the public defender's office um, and more. Uh, look forward to passing many more bills uh, and making Illinois the number one state, friendliest state for immigrants. Fabulous. Thank you both, Senator and Representative. We so appreciate all the work that you do, your support. Um, now, actually, we are going to hear from um, a client, an NIJC client, Dariana. 
Um, and so if the representative senator or any other presenters um, would like to get off video, that might be, that you're more than welcome to. Um, thank you very, very much. And we're gonna hear from our clients and then we'll hear from our wonderful advocates, my colleagues, Hillary Richardson and Julio, Julian Lasalde. Um, so just one moment as we switch to hear Dariana. Hello, my name is Dariana Quinteros and I'm from El Salvador. Um, I was living with my grandmother in El Salvador. Um, when I was nine, my dad passed away. Um, a few years after, I had to move here with my mom to the U.S. when I was 11. And I got, when I first arrived, I was able to get my special um, immigrant juvenile visa, which, al which allowed me to stay here in the U.S. without having to worry um, of being deported. And hopefully in the future I can help my mom because, you know, she has helped me so much in this journey. Um, I'm 17 now and a few months ago I got my um, green card. Um, getting my residency has been really um, exciting and happy and I feel really happy um, because I've been waiting for this opportunity for so long ago and finally I got my green card. Um, and I also know that this will open so many doors for me um, for now and for the future. Having a permanent residency is like a way being left off. I'm really excited to travel and have a better future here in the U.S. as a permanent resident. Hello. Okay. And as you heard from Dariana, um, what an incredible story that she started this process when she was 11 and now she's 17. And with that thumbs up at the end, how wonderful that um, that she's going to feel safer and um, start a more secure life here in the States. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues, Julian and Hillary. Um, we're doing excellent on time here. So I'm gonna turn to Julian and Hillary to explain a little bit about this process, their work in it, and what it means for Illinois and our immigrant children. Julian? Hi, uh, thanks, Ellen. Um, hi, everybody, good morning. Uh, again, my name is Julian Lasalde with uh, NIJC. I'm uh, part of the policy team uh, on staff. And um, it has, has been mentioned, I had the uh, honor and the privilege to work with not only my colleague on staff, Hillary, um, but also with Daniel Comas in the Public Guardian's Office and so many other advocates uh, to work with, uh, by extension as well, um, Senator Castro, Representative Tom Gershwitz and other elected officials to um, get this get this done ultimately, not just this year, but as was referenced by both elected officials um, in starting with the bill that we worked on in 2019 to get us to take us, help us take that first step. and. I'm not sure if yeah, both uh, elected officials around, but you know, again, just want to make sure to give them a huge uh, round of uh, applause and thank you for what they did. I mean, as, as the senator mentioned, um, because of the pandemic uh, and the truncated legislative session that happened last year in 2020, there was a backlog this year, and so there were. There's always a lot of bills, and this year there was even that many more bills um, that were in front of all of them in both the House and, and the Senate. And with that. Um, they still were able to not, not only work on this bill um, with their colleagues, but get, as, as was mentioned, bipartisan support for some for a bill that, um, you know, uh, right now the bipartisanship is kind of a hard thing to come by. And especially when you're dealing with legislation that focuses on, on immigrant populations, I think it, can lead, it can easily lead to assumptions being made about what that is, what the bill is, and what it really does, and what it doesn't do. Um, and, you know, uh, we didn't have to worry about those assumptions being made because the senator and representative really went out of their way to speak with colleagues and make sure that this was understood and what this was, uh, the impact of this bill in, 20, in 2021 and the impact of the, the original SIJS bill in 2019 and what it had for, for, for um, intended populations. So with, you know, we had amazing bipartisan support and uh, it was one of the, it was one bill that I really didn't have to really sweat so much <laughs> when working with other colleagues on in, um, in Springfield, which is uh, also a treat as well in terms of not having to worry about having the votes right we just needed to make sure we explain the bill in its full form for folks and so again a huge thank you to them thank you so much to hillary and to danielle for being such not only amazing content content issue experts but then bringing that 
not only lent knowledge, but that humanity to the process to make sure that both bills in 2019 and this one in 2021 really reflected the needs of uh, the intended populations of the bills. Um, and uh, again, you know, I, I've been a part of processes where bills can take, the bill writing process can take forever and there's amendments after amendments to the bills and we didn't really have to worry about that this time around as well. Um, it was pretty much a straight shot from start to finish. And that, that again speaks to who was helping to draft the legislation and making sure that we had what was in the bill and what needed to be in the bill to get it through. And again, most importantly, to, to positively impact um, this, this set of, uh, this unique set of, uh, of the immigrant population. So um, with that, I guess, you know, and I, I, but with that, I also just say thank you to NIJC for everything that the rest of my colleagues do, Hillary and her team and her colleagues. Um, it's it's um, truly amazing work to watch from afar. Uh, and every once in a while, I get to join in um, by being a part of it in this way. And so just thank you for uh, answering all these, all the questions, for picking up the phone on a Saturday, on a beautiful Saturday afternoon at three o'clock to be on a, um, a Senate committee hearing at 3.30, you know, um, uh, on uh, a Memorial Day weekend. You know, that's the sort of, you know, effort that uh, I'm not surprised by, but it always is it's just really edifying, spirit edifying for me to see and to be part of. So thank you for that. And with that, I'll turn it over to Hillary. Thanks, Julian. Um, I would just echo everything that Julian said about um, the commitment and the work that uh, folks at NIJC and the representatives um, and uh, Danielle Gomez at the Public Guardian's Office and the folks at CVLS, Chicago Volunteer Legal Services, really everyone who kind of worked together to make sure that um, the way that this bill was written and drafted was the most um, appropriate and effective to protect the folks we're talking about. And, and Julian talked a little bit about um, how great it was to have the bipartisan support. And I think that is in great part due to the great work that the, the representatives did. Um, and I think also just speaks to the compelling nature of the folks that we're working with and the folks that we're talking about who are immigrant youth, young children, um, immigrant young people who, who have suffered pretty significantly um, and who are deserving of this protection and stability. So I am really excited um, to, to see this roll out in Illinois and to see the, the full extent of federal protection extended to vulnerable young people in our state. Um, I really hope that the both the law itself and the way that we um, help to roll it out can be a model for other states to continue to be welcoming of and protective of um, all of their vulnerable populations, but particularly uh, young immigrants who, who have been abused or abandoned or neglected. So thank you again to um, my colleagues at NIJC, to Julian, to Ellen for um, really helping to put this together to get the word out to the representatives, to Danielle Gomez. Um, I'm just, I'm really excited for this event and I'm really excited to get started on the work now that we have all of these folks who um, will, will be able to access this protection. So thanks to all of you. Thank you, Julian and, and Hillary. Um, today went really fast. We usually run out of time at these events. Um, I guess there's always just so much to do. We've gotten really good at the virtual events. If there's any questions um, from participants that are online right now, we do have a couple extra minutes. Um, we will be having a pro bono training with fabulous panelists starting at 9.45. That's the time that we um, publicized. And so we'll respect that time for people that are signing on. Um, if there's any questions though right now from participants about what this law means um, or any comments, if we have any immigrant children on the line too, you're more than welcome to pipe in. Otherwise, yeah, you're more than welcome to pipe in. And if not, um, we will cut this short and say thank you for your time Congratulations to everyone. Thank you for all that you do. And at 9.45, um, we will start again for the pro bono training. So we're going to um, take a brief pause at 9.45 Central Time, so in 25 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.